Okay, let's move on. How do we prepare stainless cash flow in an indirect method? In terms of exams, I would not ask you to actually do one. We're going to do one exercise in class later. But if I give you a statement of cash flow, I'll give you part of it, you have to know what it means. Okay, I will not actually ask you to do one from scratch. I'm not going for that or any other types of statements. So if I present one or a part of the information for one section, to calculate just operating activities cash flow or investing activities cash flow or financing activities cash flow. Okay, so you have to know how to do the calculation part. So always in the op operating activity section, this is just looking at the operating section, the first part of statement of cash flow. So we would start from net income and then do some adjustments to reconcile net income to the cash provided in this activity section. And what this means is, basically, earlier what I mentioned, we want to tease out the part that has nothing to do with cash inflow, cash outflow. That's what it means by the adjustments line. Okay, so we will do this by adjusting some of the income statement accounts. Depreciation is always the first one to look for. Any depreciation amount you see on income statement, remember depreciation is really a measurement. We estimate, for example, a desk that worth could be used for 10 years, and we spread the cost along each and every year. But the depreciation expense, really, company perspective, they're not paying any cash to anybody. They purchase the furniture, they spread the cost year by year, consider it as the usage expense, but it's not really a cash expense. Okay, so that depreciation was originally subtracted in the net income when we do the calculation. Remember, revenue minus expenses, we add back depreciation because it's not a cash expense. But it was subtracted in net income earlier. So we add that amount back, whatever the amount is. Okay, any depreciation, amortization expense, we will add it to net income earlier. It was subtracted, but it's not a cash expense. So we add it back. Now the idea of loss on sale of long-term assets, we're adding it back as well. Earlier it was subtracted from net income. We're adding it back just because later on the cash will be um, representing it under investing activities. Okay, so we're adding back loss, subtracting any gain on sale of plan asset. Those two just because later it will be represented in the second section. Now in terms of balance sheets, this I'll go into more details later. Any increase in current asset other than cash increase, meaning if there is accounts receivable, we compare it to last year's balance, any increase, we will subtract it from net income. Any decrease in current asset, we will add it back. Okay, a simple example to memorize here is you can think about accounts receivables. If you think about accounts receivables, last year's balance was $5,000. Let's say this year's balance is $10,000. If there were an increase in accounts receivable, this is a current asset other than cash, accounts receivable represent cash collection later on. So any increase in this category does not affect, um, it's reported in sales revenue, but it's not really a cash revenue. Okay, so this increase in current assets, just immediately think of the example of accounts receivables. In increase in accounts receivables increases sales revenue, but it's not a cash sales revenue. Okay, so any amount there, we would subtract it from net income. Because within net income, there's a part of sales revenue that's incorporated in it, but it's not cash sales revenue. Okay, the same example works for decreases in current assets. Decreases in accounts receivables, that basically means you collected some of the cash on account. So we add that amount that we collected. Okay, so it's the opposite of um, decrease in, increase in current assets. Now current liabilities is more straightforward. If we have a decrease in current liabilities, if you think about accounts payable, last year's balance is 5,000, this year is 1,000. You have a decrease in accounts payable, the $4,000, that basically means you paid off the cash. So any decrease in current liabilities, think of the example of accounts payable. The deduction part, we subtract cash flow amount because that's the amount we actually paid off. Clear the liability. So as opposed to that increase in current li liabilities, oftentimes accounts payable increase, 
the journal entry the other side might be increasing inventory or increasing a type of utility expense or different type of expenses. That amount that increased there was subtracted earlier from expenses, but it's not a cash expense, so we add it back. 